Who's ready to go for a sunset flight from Key West to Miami? This guy is. uniform. Key West Ground, good evening, November 851 Tango Bravo over at the FBO with uniform, we're going to pick up our IFR. 851 Tango Bravo, Key West Ground, clear to the Overlook Airport, as filed, maintain 1515,000, departure frequency 124.02, squawk 4575. Cleared up to Opelaka, as filed, we're going to climb maintain 15,000. 124.02 on the departure frequency and 45757 transponder for 851 Tango Bravo. 851 Tango Bravo, read back straight, Roman 9 or taxi via Alpha. New information coming up, wind 08012, altimeter 3003. Roger, thanks for that, and Alpha to Roman 9 or for 851 Tango Bravo. Well, welcome aboard, everybody. We're down here in Key West tonight. Today we have on board one of my good friends, Peyton. Peyton, welcome aboard. Thank you. And we also have in the back, Leslie. Say hello, um, Leslie. Hey. Oh, there, there, that's Leslie. All right, so we came down to Key West today. The TBM here, 851 Tango Bravo, just got out of its annual, so we wanted to do a little test flight. So what better place to do it than to come to Key West, get a little dinner, and then have a nice sunset flight back to Miami. All right, so 4240. our clearance here, we're gonna, we got cleared right up to 15,000. Which is what we filed for our final cruise altitude. And we're going to go do the Duval 2 arrival into Opelaka. It's an IFR flight. We'll go over to Tower here. Key West Tower, November 851 Tango Bravo. We're holding short of Niner. That was our squad. 4575. Good catch. Anyway, 851 Tango Bravo, turn left heading 360, runway 9 clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 9 we'll turn left at 360, 851 Tango Bravo. Alright, so we are clear for takeoff here. Clear right. And clear left. If it sounds like Peyton knows what he is doing, yeah, he does. He is a professional pilot himself, so. I just there. pretend like I know. <laughs> exactly right. This is runway 9 and here we go. So we'll ease the. Prop RPM of up to 2,000, and then we'll advance the power for takeoff. There we go. So pressure temperatures all look good in the green. And there's our rotation speed. We'll go gear up, tap the brakes to get the wheels from stop spinning. And there's a Navy base just right out here in front of us, so we'll do a nice quick early turn out here. And we'll go flaps up in our yaw damper on. Beautiful night. It is, isn't it? This is one of my favorite times to fly. And the sunset off the oh, uh, wow. left is a, amazing. Roger over to departure. Enjoy the rest of your evening. One Tango Bravo. You too, sir. And departure, November 851 Tango Bravo with you off of Key West at 1,200 for 15,000. 360 heading. 
If I have one Tango Bravo approach radar, contact. One Tango Bravo, proceed right, Carnew. Direct Carnew, Carnew, uh, 851 Tango Bravo. So we've been cleared direct to Carnew, which is before Weaver. We'll go into 850 mode here, so our flap lever up and over the gate, and now we can advance the power. And we'll turn off our inertial separator. As you guys can see off the left here out west, look at that beautiful sunset over the Gulf of Mexico. Really nice. Now is that fuel tank switch left to right automatically? Yeah, the, uh, it has a timer on the ground. It does certain interv intervals faster than when you're up in the air flying, and the timer for the fuel tank selector is automatic. Okay. I actually had that fail on me, uh, well, I think last year in one of my videos it failed, and I had the auto select light come on, which would be right there. That's We just went to manual mode, and that's right. the light that comes on if it does fail by right. itself. EBM 1 Tango Bravo, contact Miami Center 1 Tree 3.5. Good evening. 33.5, 851 Tango Bravo, have a good evening. I mean, good evening, November 851 Tango Bravo, out of 10,500 for 15,000, we're direct car new. November 851 Tango Bravo, Miami Center, Roger, uh, U.S. altimeter 3003. 03, thank you, 851 Tango Bravo. One Tango Bravo, just to confirm, you are uh, on the Duval 2 after car new? Affirmative, we are on the Duval 2 for 851 Tango Bravo. One Tango Bravo, Roger. There's the, uh blimp right there to the right. Oh yeah, look at that. Yeah, uh, Peyton was just pointing out there's a blimp that's right off our right side right now. Uh, you actually, if you look at all the charts and the sectionals, you'll see a big restricted area right there where you do not want to fly into, because it's a blimp that I believe goes to, what height do you think it goes to? I'm not sure, it looks like eight, 9,000 feet. Yeah, probably. And supposedly the United States government owns it and it does some kind of surveillance, I believe, of the waterways out here or maybe it's a weather balloon. I don't know if it's weather or what it does, but it's a blimp and it's got a big long cord all the way to the ground. So if you fly through that restricted airspace and you hit the cord, that's not going to be good for your airplane. <laughs> yeah. Oh. 1,000 to go. 1, 4,000 for 1, 5,000. All right, we're... Capturing our altitude here, that we're going to be leveling off now here at 15,000, which is our cruise altitude for this flight. We'll let the airplane build up some speed, and then we'll uh, set cruise power. Air China A7, Nana, Roger. Was that Air China? Air China, yeah. They've been going uh, into Cuba. I hear, I hear them every day going into there. So Peyton, uh... Tell the viewers what you kind of job you do for a living. I guess I'd like to probably understand where your background comes from. Right now, I'm uh, flying a Convair 5800 out of uh, Miami International for a company called IFL. And what, what we do is uh, contract uh, for FedEx, flying cargo to Central South America. Um, so yeah, we're flying a Convair 580 and a Convair 5800. How do you like that plane to fly? It is old but reliable. It's uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a uh, pretty big uh, prop multi multi engine airplane. Uh, turb they have a uh, turbines instead of the pistons on these ones. Three and the cargo you fly is uh, for FedEx, right? FedEx, yep. Which is a your competition of what your dad flies for. Yep. <laughs> He's at UPS on the 7675 out of Miami. Yes, uh, Peyton's father, he flies for UPS. He's been there. How long do you think your father's been at UPS? 27 years. Wow, so he's coming up on retirement here soon. Nice, uh, yeah, what, 14 years? Oh, does he really? Yeah, he got there, he got hired there when he was 26, so he was uh, very lucky. That's cool, you and your dad uh, got a little competition going. You fly basically the cargo for FedEx and he does UPS. Yep. And we literally park right next to each other. This weekend, uh, Peyton and I, we went to the, uh, and Leslie, we were all at the Fort Lauderdale Air Show. Uh, it was a really great time. The weather was perfect. And a little story about this. Okay, so Friday, I went over to the beach, was riding my booster board around, you know, just checking out the pre-air show activities. And I went by these three uh, girls, you know, and uh, they, I thought they hollered something at me, but I wasn't really too f sure that they were talking to me. So, you know, I kept going. But I kept looking over my shoulder, and these girls, Peyton, were bicycle riding 
as fast as they could to try to keep up with me on the booster board. And, and I'm like, well, are they trying to chase me down or something? What did I do? Well, anyway, I eventually decided to slow down because they were following me. Huh. And here, they were the Thunderbirds, the demonstration team for the Air Force in the United States. Uh, they were the wives of the pilots, which was pretty unique. Uh, 851 Tango Bravo to send maintain 9000. Uh, 9000, 851 Tango Bravo. So, anyway, yeah, we got talking with the wives and the one pilot, his name is Nick, of Thunderbird number five. He's the lead solo. Nick follows and watches our videos here on YouTube, which I thought was pretty cool. So we got to hang out with them. We exchanged phone numbers with the wife. And uh, Saturday night, me and Peyton and Leslie, we all got to meet up with Nick. And it was a lot of fun, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Great, great people. But that was a lot of fun, Peyton. To me, the uh, demonstration teams, the Blue Angels, the uh, Thunderbirds, to me, they're the rock stars of aviation. They, they really are. That's that's who I look up to. And I know uh, thousands of other pilots or aspiring pilots look up to. They are the rock stars to us. Exactly. I mean, uh, some of my fondest memories as a kid going to an air show and seeing those guys fly the jets it is what really put the spark in me to want to be a pilot. Yep. What kind of, a, have you had any kind of inspirational figures in your life that uh, has determined how you wanted to go to fly airplanes? Obviously, you know, I've always looked up to Thunderbirds, Blue Angels, but the uh, number one driving force for me obviously had to be my father growing up watching him fly, uh, you know, big heavies all over the world. That, that was uh, a big impact on me and, and what I do today. And, and not only just him, uh, his father, my grandfather, is also a corporate pilot, so it, oh, it cool. runs in the family. So uh, I knew from a pretty uh, young age that uh, this is... Aviation was what you'd like to do. That's really cool that a lot of your family was already into aviation. Yep, it's, uh, it's the uh, best job in the world. Like my uh, father always says, it's better than working for a living. Exactly. One really cool thing that Nick, uh, the pilot for the Thunderbirds, gave me was this coin. Charlie it's Steve. the uh, Solos Charlie coin. He's uh, number five, and the reason why the five is upside down is because when they're doing their maneuvers together, the number five jet's usually the one that's upside down. It says, "Love by millions, hated by four, which is pretty funny. I guess that's the other, you know, there's uh, six people total in the uh, demonstration team, so it's kind of funny how they play on that. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? Give me that really cool coin. I'll probably bring that with me all over the place. Just leave it here in the airplane with me. So a big shout out to Amy, uh, Nick's wife. Without her uh, recognizing and coming over and introducing themselves to us, we would have never met Nick. So it was really cool to get to talk with both of them. All right, what else did we say we were going to do now? I can't remember. I didn't really plan for this one very well. <laughs> Why don't you guys talk about how you guys are cat dads? No. Uh -oh. <laughs> Just kidding. Because you guys are like, no. <laughs> oh, it's funny. All right, guys. Look at there's the sunset, the Gulf of Mexico out there. What we're coming up on now is the very southern part of Florida. Expert three one, Miami Center Roger. As you can see right down here, that's our routing. Hey, let's go. Let's look at Leslie. Leslie, how's yeah. Leslie doing back there? I am comfortable. I, I can barely see you. Wait, let me turn my selfie. Oh, there, look at her. Light she, on. she, oh, there we go. Oh, Leslie's enjoying the ride. Look at that. <laughs> She's got that new selfie light on her cell phone. Leslie, the pilot li pilot wife. Yeah. My hashtags are pilot wife, pilot life. So, we will get the ATIS here. ATIS, Papa time, two, three, four, five, Zulu. Wind one two zero one zero visibility one zero one five clear. Bravo, contact Miami approach one two zero point five. Twenty point five eight five one Tango Bravo. Have a good evening. Yeah. Miami, good evening. November eight five one Tango Bravo with you nine hundred thousand. Eight five one Tango Bravo. My approach center maintain three thousand eight is Papa current. Right, we're going to be getting Papa now. And we'll go down to three thousand eight five one Tango Bravo. Santa Barbara fifteen. So we're on an instrument seven, arrival seven, right now three, into the Miami three. area. It's called the Duval 2. This is actually the arrival I do every night into Miami. That's true. Peyton flies down south quite a bit. What where, where the countries do you fly to? Uh, Guatemala, Honduras, uh, Mexico. Oh, yeah, so yeah, your, your routes 
I go north most of the time in this plane, you go south with yours. So this is all your territory out here. Yeah, it's very uh, familiar to me. Uh, I don't know if they can see out the window. Straight ahead, we're starting to see Miami. See those, that bar of lights? Yeah. That's Cargo City at Miami International. How about that? You can see all the lights of South Florida coming into view. Look at the eight is here. Alright, we got pop up. His frequency got a lot busier with all the arrivals, departures coming into South Florida. So it is severe clear outside, but we will still let's set up for the ILS. We'll do the ILS 9 left. So what we're going to look at here is, you know, the, the airport. We got the uh, Opelaka. Executive, uh, we're going to do the ILS, 9 left, 110.5, set up in number 1, we're going to do 110.5, set up and back it up there in number 2. The uh, final approach course is going to be 093, so we're going to set 093, and to get my course on the uh, my main instruments here. I'm going to go into nav mode. I'm going to go into heading mode real quick. Then I'm going to go hit nav. One. I'm in localizer one right now. I'm going to put zero nine three. And then I'm going to go back into the GPS mode and then re-engage back into nav. Looking for traffic. We'll maintain four thousand on board thirty seven zero eight. So we've got that set up. We're going to brief uh, the whole approach. Three six zero eight five one Tango Bravo. So I'm going to do my heading bug over here to 360, and we're going to go back into heading mode. So we, we read all the notes. We uh, have our missed approach instructions all briefed. And uh, we're all good to go. So I've got the whole approach briefed, and we'll be prepared for that. One Tango Bravo, turn left, heading 350. 3508-51 Tango Bravo. If you're at 42, my approach is going to maintain 8,000. I believe there's a set of lights right out there in front of us in the Everglades. That's an Indian reservation out there. Then let me know I forget which one it is, but... Five miles is a heavy 767 American I used to know. I can't remember either. Inside American 2465. When you were out here over the Everglades at night, it's beneficial to be instrument rated because sometimes when it's a dark sky, there's no lights out here over the Everglades, so it all blends together. One Tango Bravo, turn right heading 020, contact approach 128.6. 020 and 28.6, Tango Bravo. This is nice having a co pilot. I like this. I know, man. I'm getting bored over here. Give me something to do. I know, right? 360 North American 69. Well, I mean, good evening, November 851 Tango Bravo. 3000 heading with Papa. 851 Tango Bravo, approach, expect only 9 left, and descend to maintain 2000. Down to 2000, we'd like to put on the uh, request for ILS 9 left for 851 Tango Bravo. 851 Tango Bravo, reaching 2000, proceed direct O'Kane. Okay. Yep. Roger, once we hit 2000, we'll go to direct O'Kane, okay 851 Tango Bravo. American 134, proceed direct VMAX. All right, so the finalizer approach here, we're going to select our approach, ILS 9 left, OK, and we'll activate that. So we're on a heading assignment right now, and we were given when we hit 2,000 feet, we can then go direct to OK. So well, we have directed into OK right now, we won't go to that until we hit 2,000 feet. It's amazing how much technology is in this thing compared to, oh, compared to your plane? Yeah. Yeah, this, I really love the setup of this plane. Some people like glass instrument panels, like the G1000. You know, I prefer this setup. I really enjoy this one. It's more what I grew up on in my career as flying. It's it's very similar, so I really enjoy this one. TBM one Tango Bravo, cross O'Kane at 1,700 or above, courtesy ILS 9 left. Roger, we'll cross O'Kane at 1,700 and we'll be clear for the ILS 9 left, 851 Tango Bravo. Delta 2034, proceed direct valley. Alright, so let's see here. We're 15 miles from O'Kane. 324, start a view of far descent, follow the shoreline south. What he told us is to cross O'Kane at or above 1,700 feet. So we'll put 1,700 feet in here in the altitude selector, and we'll start on down for that.
We'll slow the plane up under 200 knots so we can turn on our inertial separator. That's the limitation American, for turning it on. It's 200 knots or less. Once you have your inertial separator on, you can go above 200 knots, but as it's traffic? activating, it doesn't want to have to push against any faster air than 200 knots. I'll pull the power back to get under our flap speed. Now what we're looking for is we're on the localizer, which is the line in the middle, and that's all lined up. We're going to be watching the glide slope come in. When the, uh, 34.67. Have a good night, one tango bravo. American 3. Good evening, Opelaga Tower. TBM 851 Tango Bravo on the ILS 9 left. 851 Tango Bravo, block tower, running on our left, clear to land. Clear to land, 9 left, 851 Tango Bravo. All right, we're clear to land. So, yeah, the, we're basically looking for the exact same setup and profile of every ILS. So, we're a mile and a half from the uh, fix here. We're going to put our flaps to the first notch of the setting. And we're also going to make look in uh, at the uh, indicator, make sure it's indicating along with selected. Now the next thing you're always going to do is just look at the glide slope come down in, and when you're one dot above, you're going to go gear down. So the glide slope's coming down, there it is, one dot above, now we're putting the gear in transition. And there we go, we got three green. Now we're going to set the uh, power for 25 on the torque with this airplane. There's our outer marker. Now, with how we put the flaps in and the gear in one dot above, we don't have to really touch this another thing. We just, it's going to fly itself right on in and it'll have proper airspeed and it'll be configured for this approach properly. And beautiful night. You can see the runway out there. And that's all there is to it on an ILS. We go down to our decision altitude, which is Peyton. Let's see, you got 258. We would basically go down to 258 no matter what. You see the uh, you see the runway environment, you land. If not, you go do your missed approach. That's all there is to it. It's always so nice, all the different lights out down here in South Florida. Got yeah. Miami just to the southeast over there, downtown Miami. Yeah, it's amazing. Pretty good office view, right, Peyton? Yes, sir, it is. So all you guys out there that are going through and getting your rings, just keep, enjoy every step, and before you know it, you'll get to experience the same type of thing. It happens quicker than you, uh, well, than you know it. Yeah, it does. We'll disconnect the autopilot and enjoy hand flying it the rest of the way in. Switching the guns. <laughs> yeah, switching the guns. 500. Three green, clear to land. I feel like they put new uh, lights in here a couple but months ago. They look like they're LED. Yeah, I believe they're LED lights. I noticed that in one of my last night landing videos here. I always loved as a kid going to the airport at night and looking at the lights. Oh yeah, it's really a cool thing to see. Alright, so we're right on our speed and we're in the proper glide path. I'll start to pull the power back here a little bit. I know your airplane sits a lot higher than mine, so don't worry about how low we're getting. <laughs> and there we go. Very nice. Welcome to Opelaka, guys. So we're going to get off. We're going to go for Charlie Intersection for our, to exit the runway, and that'll be close to our ramp. One number, one tank umbrella to destination. Go ahead and signature for 851 tank umbrella. One tank umbrella, turn right, one able, then taxi to the ramp via Papa, remain this frequency. I just want to go Ray and Charlie, Papa into the ramp with you, 851 Tango Bravo. Have a good night. There's Echo and Charlie will be the next one. If visibility at night is not really good, you just follow the little yellow lines in and that'll guide you right into the taxiways off of most runways. If They're right. So here's our little yellow line. And we'll follow that right on into Charlie intersection here. 
Welcome to Opelaka, Miami, Florida, guys. Clear on the right. And clear on the left. And our taxi instructions were Papa into the ramp. So Papa taxiway is right here, our second left. Well, Peyton, it was awesome having you ride along with us tonight. And uh, Leslie back there, you still awake? Yeah, I'm in and out. Oh boy, she's, <laughs> she's pulling her Reggie. <laughs> I appreciate you taking me. It uh, it was a blast. Uh, awesome weekend all together. But yeah, that last weekend was fun. It was a great chance to uh, finally get into the TBM 850. Hopefully, we'll get you in there again someday. Amazing airplane. It is a lot of fun to fly. All right, there's our guys out front, so we'll turn our taxi light off so we don't Hello, blind them. Yeah, they don't Five like that, do they? Guys, it was awesome having everybody on board. I hope you guys enjoyed this sunset flight from Key West to Miami. And we hope you guys are all doing well. And once again, uh, like smack that thumbs up button if you like the video. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys.